Part of a police and army convoy delivering ballot boxes, the two journalists were waiting in this car when a police officer approached, shouted, God is greatest, and opened fire. Masses of police and army are providing security for the elections, but this region, host, bordering Pakistan, is terribly dangerous, and protecting against a rogue police officer is impossible. Hugely experienced journalist Cathy Gannon is being treated in hospital outside Kabul for her injuries, and is described as stable. Photojournalist Anya Nadringhaus was killed instantly in the attack. Also hugely experienced, she is famous for her work in some of the world's toughest places. Like Cathy, she was bearing witness to this hugely important presidential election. A Pulitzer Prize winner for coverage of Iraq, she also took sports pictures with equal touch. The Taliban have, of course, carried out many more attacks, killing innocent Afghans, and they're threatening all of these would-be voters gathering at last-minute hustings before the Saturday election. Despite the threats, all the candidates have been amazed at the sheer numbers who have ignored Taliban intimidation to take part. There is a sense here that everyone understands the election's importance. Well, this election is hugely significant, not least because it'll be the first election in Afghanistan's history where there has been a handover of power that didn't involve fighting. The question, though, being asked by these people is how much is really going to change here? Well, all of the candidates are well known. They've all been involved in government. And the view by many analysts that, in fact, for most people, nothing will change at all. Certainly, there won't be a sudden change to the lives of ordinary people, but proof that democracy can overcome terror and lead to change is what this is about. It may need hundreds of thousands of police and army to make it happen, and it has cost lives and maybe more. But what is happening in Afghanistan today is so that it won't be like this tomorrow. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News, Kabul.